So I came in here today with my dog Ryder to show you how this old Brown Sharp number one grinder, it's over 100 years old, can grind parts that rival any parts that can be made on a brand new grinder that might cost $350,000. When I say rival, I mean rival in how round the part can be ground. So, so I've got this part here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it up on this air bearing spindle here, and I'm going to grind this part round, and we'll see just how round it can be. So one of the unique features about this grinder is I have a tip-up fixture that I can tip up and, and into this position and load the parts into, which makes dialing in parts easier. It kind of a unique thing that we came up with, especially for thin wall parts. What I'm doing right now is I'm cleaning off this surface and stoning it with our flat stones. Stoning off this surface, this surface. Put the screws in. I'm going to dial in the uh, Dial in the roundness of this part. Right now, I just want to get it dialed in to thousandths of an inch or so. Later on, we'll get it much better. I'm expecting this part to be round better than 10 micro inches when we're done. Even though, as I said, this is a 100 year old grinder. And they couldn't even measure roundness down to the 10 millionths level a hundred years ago. I got a calibrated hand. And I'm tightening these to somewhere around 50 or 60 inch pounds by hand. Okay, indicator over here. Tip it down. Put the belt on and we're ready to grind. All right, we're ready to uh, dress the wheel, so I'm going to start up the wheel. We've added a few things to this. You can see here, instead of the original spindle, we have a four inch blockhead driven by a belt. And around back, I put an inverter drive on so that uh, we can get a nice, smooth running uh, wheel. In order to get the smoothest dress I can get, what I'm going to do is use the table drive here, which we've modified a little bit. This used to have belts off the ceiling, but now it doesn't. So we have a table drive here, and when I grind, you can see here, or when I dress, and when I grind, I can uh, go back and forth. One of the things about grinding is you'd like to have a consistent dressing speed and a consistent uh, grinding speed. I'm going to go back and forth. You can see here it's driving. You can maybe see the wheel down there. And feed in a little bit. Maybe even slow it down a little because we're going to want a really smooth dress on this wheel so we can get the absolute best grind that we can get. Because if I'm going to beat a shooter grinder with this grinder, I'm going to need it really smooth and really good. This is one of the first grinders that my father, Ted Arneson, bought when he was in business, when he started up in business. I imagine this, he probably bought this in the 1950s, but it was originally built in the 1910s. So somewhere around 1915, 1916 is when it was originally built. We don't actually have the records for how old this grinder is. Wheels dressed. Need to back off the wheel so I can come in and, uh, and uh, grind this. Grinder, by the way, is really intuitive for uh, running.
grinder really gives you an appreciation for a nicely built grinder. Whoa, yikes, came in a little bit hard. Shouldn't be talking when I'm grinding. This grinder really gives you a good appreciation for what you could do a hundred years ago. A little bit of a deep cut there. We're just doing a few spark out passes here. And for the last couple of spark out cut passes, I'll turn off the uh, coolant and just let it spark out with no coolant. Sometimes gives you a nicer finish. These grinders are on a V and a flat system, way system, and sometimes you have these set up where they'll grind harder going one direction than another. So you can see this, it's only really sparking out on the outward passes. I'll do another couple of these because I really want this grind to be super smooth when I'm done. So for this test, I've brought out my two millionths of an inch per graduation indicator. So for those of you who think in metrics, two millionths of an inch is 50 nanometers. Full scale on this indicator is 200 micro inches. You can see here what we're seeing is about 5.4 micro inches of roundness. I can switch that over to uh, nanometers here. We'll switch to uh, nanometers for those of you who like metric system. And you can see that we're right around 130 or 140 nanometers. So point one four micrometers. 
So if you look at the FFT peaks, the 18 peak is the highest, the 10 peak is the next highest, and down here at the ones that you really care about for roundness, the 2 and 3, they're down around 15 nanometers, which is, uh, well, it's pretty good.